This is the Sony 24-70 G Master lens. It is the second generation and it's probably on your wish list. So let's get into it. Now let's start with what we all want to know about this lens, the image quality. I already kind of said it in my intro. The image quality of this lens is insane. I love the way that my videos look when I shoot with this lens. It is super sharp. It's honestly just what you expect from a G Master lens, especially in this price range. I've also used it for photos and I think for that it is really great too. Not only is it versatile, but it's still really sharp. This is an F2 2.8 lens, which means two things. One, bokeh. Bokeh is basically that creamy blurry background that you see in a lot of photos and videos. And basically the lower the number, the more blurriness it can produce or the more bokeh. I think that the bokeh that this lens produces is really great. It looks great. And when it comes to these bokeh balls, some lenses produce a kind of weird bokeh ball, but I think that the G Master 24 to 70 Gen 2 actually does a really good job. The second thing is light. An aperture of f2.8 means that a lot of light can come into the lens, onto the sensor, which makes this lens also great for nighttime. Ideally, you want a wide aperture so that you don't have to crank up the ISO and produce any noise in your videos or photos. So therefore, this lens is not only versatile because it's a 24 to 70, but also a 2.8. So you can use it literally any time of the day. The Gen 2 24 to 70 is a lot lighter and a lot smaller than its preceder. It is still heavier than my previous lens, which was the Tamron 28 to 75. But I have to say that this lens feels a lot more robust. Now, I think that this lens is about 200 grams lighter than its preceder, which is a really good thing. Honestly, if you're carrying around all day, then 20 hundred, no, not 20 hundred, 200 grams is going to make a huge difference. Now, if we take a look at the lens, you can see that it has quite some buttons and some switches. And the first one is this one right here. When it comes to zooming, you can set it to smooth or tight. Now, what tight does is basically it allows you to have a little bit more control over the zoom, whereas smooth allows you you guessed it, to zoom in smoothly. Then on the other side, we have a focus switch. Now you can set it to autofocus or manual focus. Before you start filming, please make sure that you check this switch. As you can see, this lens also has an aperture ring, which is great if you wanna control the aperture on the lens. I honestly always set it to the little A, and then I turn on the iris lock right here so that the aperture ring doesn't move anymore and I can control it on my camera itself. Now, if you do wanna use the aperture ring, there is also this option right here. There's a little switch for the click. So if you want, you can turn it on and now it will click as you change the aperture. Now let's talk about weather resistance because this is something that I triggered a lot of people with because I tested it and you didn't like it, but it had to be done. When I was in the UK, it was raining the entire time and I still wanted to create content. So I took it out for a spin, got it completely soaked, like completely soaked. But I am happy to report that it still works like a champ. My camera is fine. Everything is fine. It's Sony. Come on. They know what they're doing. Now I do want to just make one thing clear, I'm not saying be reckless and go stand in a fucking shower with your lens now, but if you happen to be outside and it starts raining and you need to shoot some content, you will most likely be fine. Just make sure that you have like a plastic bag or something always in your bag, but otherwise, you're gonna be fine. Another important feature of a lens is focus. Now, when it comes to this lens, in my experience, the focus has been really great. When it comes to video, you mostly rely on the autofocus, at least when you do run and gun stuff, and it has been serving me really well. I have seen some people say that there is a little bit of focus breathing here and there, but I personally haven't really experienced that, or at least not to a certain extent where it bothered me or where, you know, it really held me back from shooting anything. If you do wanna focus on something, you can either set it to manual or what I always do is I just press the screen of my camera and the transition between two objects or foreground and background is rather smooth. So yeah, I'd say that in terms of focus, you have nothing to worry about with the 24 to 70. So far, this video has been very boring because yes, this lens is great, but life isn't perfect and neither is this lens. There is one big drawback in my opinion, which I think is something that you wanna keep in mind when you're considering this lens and that is image stabilization. It doesn't have it. And I think that for this price range, it would have been really nice to have image stabilization. Now, Sony cameras have built in image stabilization and that is really great, but I don't think you can go wrong with double the amount of stabilization, right? Especially if you wanna shoot a lot of handheld stuff. I still think it looks good. I mean, I've been using this lens, lens handheld and it's, 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 it's looked good. I also understand that if you wanna add image stabilization, it gets more complex. So is it worth the trade-off? 
Probably not. It's just one of those features that I think we all would really love in a lens. The least exciting thing about this lens, and maybe strong word, you hate this about the lens, is the price. Because man, is this lens expensive. Yes, it's an investment. We get it. But I also understand that for a lot of people, this is a lot of money that you just do not have lying around to spend on a lens, right? Something that's really important to realize when it comes to lenses is that they retain their value pretty well. Honestly, this lens is worth the money regardless because it's the best of the best. But I will say this, if YouTube or videography or photography is your hobby or you do not have the budget, please do not go into debt to get this lens. Yes, it's the best of the best, but there's other options out there that are more budget friendly, that might fit into your budget and will still tick off all of the boxes for you. And one of those lenses is the Tamron 28-75. I made a review of it because I've been using it for three years before I got this one. Go check it out right here and make sure that you hit subscribe.